Super Adobe is a life-saving building technique that uses only sandbags, barbed wire, and earth. Developed by the late Iranian architect Nader Khalili, the buildings not only provide low-cost shelter, they also protect against catastrophes like tornadoes and hurricanes. Today, his children continue his quest to teach people how to build homes using inexpensive resources. My father was really inspired by things that he could find in nature. Nader Khalili was a world-renowned Iranian-American architect. He was always talking about the universal principles, earth, water, air, and fire, and how these elements work together. While Nader passed away in 2008, his son, Dostan, and daughter, Shifta, worked to continue his quest to empower the world's poor by teaching them how to build homes using inexpensive resources. For him, it was beyond just building. It was something about sort of a building and a philosophy put together that if by you really trying to understand the natural elements and work with them instead of against them. Nader was founder and director of the California Institute of Earth, Art and Architecture, known as Cal Earth, where his building technique was developed and continues to be taught to others. He decided that he wanted to learn how to build for people who didn't have any money, who didn't have access to unlimited material and unlimited budgets. So he began studying the traditional architecture of Iran, which is where he was from, and really fell in love with the earth architecture concept and spent the rest of his life, you know, evolving and developing different ways of building with the earth and sort of taking this old technology and bringing it into the current age. Nader's patented building technique is known as the Super Adobe System. This is a very simple building technology. It's sandbags, barbed wire, and earth. Those are pretty much the only things involved. And what you do is you fill the sandbag with earth. You can either stabilize it or not. You can add a little cement depending on what you want to do or some other kind of stabilizer like lime. Okay. And then you add in uh, a little bit of water into the mix and once you pour it into the bag, you basically take a step back and you lay it in a course. And once it's laid flat and it's in the correct position, then someone will come and tamp it down to compact the material. That's what the strength really comes from, is the compaction. And then between every row, we lay a course of barbed wire. That combination creates an immensely strong structure that's above and beyond all the, the building requirements. with a handful of people, even without any experience, and one skilled instructor. We have workshop participants building domes in one day within two days of being here. So inside this structure, you can see that there are PVC pipes uh, and they're being used to bring light into the building as well as bring air and ventilation. There are some in the top for skylights. And again, this is all just recycled material that you can access anywhere. Uh, there's a small little bedroom nook in this dome so that you can sleep here. Uh, it can be made bigger, of course. It's all very uh, flexible depending on what it is that you need. You can shift and change the, the style of the building, the size, you can put different kinds of big windows, but if you have no money and no materials, you can just utilize things like PVC pipes and recycled materials like that. This breakthrough idea came to Nader through years of research and development as well as meditation. 
One of his biggest inspirations was the uh, Persian poet Rumi, who lived about 800 years ago. One story goes that, you know, he was so fearful of, of his building always having cracks in it. And, you know, architects are always afraid of things that are cracking. And so what he did is he went to the poetry of Rumi and he found a poem that said that, that which you fear now is your true worth. And he took that and he sort of thought about it and he said, well, I must be worth a crack then, you know? And he spent some time meditating on it. And then he looked to nature and he saw all these different kinds of animals that their scales, they have cracks in them, like lizards and snakes. And he saw how the crack was built into the design, right? Something in nature that he found. So he started to build the crack in, that's what he would say, that, you know, by covering the, the buildings with what we call reptiling, it's a small little uh, earthen ball that we cover that you can utilize that not only does it create sun and shade zones, it trickles the water down, but it prevents having a large surface that's totally open faced so that you're not worrying constantly about refacing your building all the time. Yeah, I came here 10 years ago um, to learn to build my own house and spent three years uh, studying with Nada Kalili. <laughs> and then I finished up, did my study and went off and I was building houses in all sorts of different countries around the world. I got a phone call from uh, another friend who said that the architect Kalili had passed away. You know, and I just was literally dropped to my knees. I, it was a surprise. And sort of in the following months, his family and myself and other long-term apprentices who'd known him and who cared about the work, we all came together and said, how can we keep this place alive? So what we need then is a couple of people to... When I was here as an apprentice, he was always talking about how the construction industry, architecture, engineering was always characterized by men. And he felt that it was wrong, and that women have an energy, the feminine energy that brings something valuable. And so he went out of his way to keep the technical part of the work such that women could participate, so the children could participate. So you don't need to be really strong. You need instead to be cooperative. And since then I've been the site director, helping to bring in apprentices, helping the, helping the Kalili family really to run their father's legacy. Every year around the world, 60,000 people die in natural disasters, often due to the collapse of buildings. Most of these deaths occur in the developing world, but the super adobe structures have withstood earthquakes, hurricanes, and tsunamis. These projects have been done all over the world. Um, in different countries, we've had students go and build in disaster areas. And there's different issues in different parts of the world, different kinds of um, natural elements. And what we've tried to do is figure out ways to modify the structures so that they will withstand uh, all the elements. You know, at this point, we feel confident to say that these are hurricane-proof tornado proof that, you know, they're earthquake resistant to the highest amount that you can test. And we've actually had people um, build in Haiti and other countries and show that these buildings have withstood, you know, after the hurricane has come. For example, somebody built in the Philippines and we actually saw a picture of the building after a typhoon had come through and the building was still standing. Well, the Philippines is um, a very vulnerable country um, to climate change impacts, extreme weather events. When I saw what CalEarth was doing, um, I thought it was something that I would like to learn more um, and see if it is a viable solution to some of our problems with housing and um, emergency response. 
especially building. I was never an earth builder. I had not. I had no experience at all um, in architecture um, or any form of building. And um, Cal Earth taught me so much. And um, I see more a future in it, and developing more of um, earth architecture in the Philippines and making it an example. How can we build shelters for people in the world uh, who have no money? Imagine that, you know, we say, okay, we don't have any money, we can't, how, how are we going to start? So we sat down, uh, we, we bought, we had some money, we bought 10 uh, straw bales, sat around uh, uh, in a circle, that became our classroom. And then uh, I came out and I said, look, the only thing that we can build that doesn't cost any money is to dig a pit. One of the things my father always talked about was that it's really important in your life to have a quest, a reason to wake up every morning that's beyond just what you're going to do that day. Eventually, you know, somehow the pieces come together, and that was what Cal Earth was for him. He was so all about helping other people. It's truly amazing because it's not that we're just coming in and we're saying, here, we're going to build this for you. We say, no, we're going to just teach you to do it and then we're going to leave so that you can continue and continue to build with your own community. While Nader's goal was to develop inexpensive, weather-resistant housing, in doing so, he leaves behind a legacy of empowering those with the fewest resources. <laughs>